I think it's important to remember. I think it's very important to remember the, the things that went before you because you have no sense of gravity if you don't know history of the people that you come from. I think that the people I come from want me to do what I do. I think they communicate through me what I do. And a lot of times that makes them live on. And I want to tell their story. I want to tell their story as a continuing unbroken line of communication. I have been a working artist for over 50 years professionally, but as a four or five year old child, I started out doing sculptures out of the red clay in Georgia. My mother was of mixed heritage. She was Cherokee and Melungeon. And the Melungeon people are a blend of triracial origin. They are Africans that came to these shores before there was slavery, uh, Portuguese traders, and then Creek Indians. That was my grandmother's, my mother's mother's side. And then my father was a Luther, and he was Cherokee and German. My heritage is very mixed, and I think that that informs, it informs almost everything that I do. Whether it is conscious or unconscious, it's always there. Also, I grew up in a very natural setting, playing in the woods. When we were little, there was a place that we would play in the woods where the little people came. And the real part of them is that they follow the lineages of the Cherokee. They live where we live. They help us. They protect children that are lost in the woods. They take care of the small animals in the woods. And I, and I talk about them a lot. I create little dolls that look like them. That's an honoring, and that is a connection back to the past and back to my heritage. I am a very nature-oriented and inspired person. I love the natural world. So I started to paint with natural materials, rocks, sticks, um, twigs, stones, and those things inspire me. Somehow the angles and the shapes and the forms, just the feel of them. Objects are not just objects all of the time. Sometimes they have a life of their own. And certainly the dolls that I do, I feel have a spirit that they carry with them. And that spirit connects back to the people that I come from. And they're getting to talk again. They're getting to um, look through the eyes of something. This charcoal, it came from the last pit firing that I did. I, I pit fire pottery, which is, it, it's an ancient way of a low fire um, process that you can do with clay. But this is the end product. And this is winter pokeberry. Um, I just crushed the berries and then strained them through and made this pokeberry paint. I don't work from uh, anything like a photograph or even something outside that I see. It's more internal. It's a very intuitive art and it flows like the consciousness. The gallery is pretty much a dream of mine to have a place where I can have my art and where I can show uh, the things that I have done. And I have produced a massive amount of artwork. Until we opened the gallery, this artwork was all stored. It would travel out for exhibits or shows. Oftentimes, I wouldn't get to go with the art.
this is one of the mojo dolls. And mojo purely means good luck or magic. It could mean either thing. And it comes from the African culture. And the dolls were made, when I was making them as a child, they were made, I don't know why, uh, to begin with. As I became older, I understood that it's because it was in my DNA and in my memory to do that, in a, in a collective memory to do that. I left them as gifts in the woods. And I think I was leaving them for maybe the, the spirits that were there in the woods, the trees, the, the animals, the little people that were there. More than being playthings, they were little offerings. I want them to live on. I don't want the people to be forgotten. I don't want their ways to be forgotten. Their voices need to be heard, even in modern times, because it makes everybody around them and us richer to remember the past, to be able to connect to the past. Um, we may forget and lose our way if we don't have that to inform us.